Okay, so in this video, we're going to now work on a animation of a geometric rotation. We're going to do this in the coordinate plane. Our tool that we're going to use for our animation is PowerPoint. And if we click on the next PowerPoint slide, we see we have our coordinate plane and our instructions. It states to create a flipbook animation that rotates a figure 90 degrees clockwise about the origin. If you go back to our notes in class, all of our notes were moving counterclockwise, but I kept telling you that moving counterclockwise and clockwise that there were some measurements that would overlap. So 90 degrees clockwise is the same as 270 degrees counterclockwise, and we discussed this. So this is the motion rule for 270 degrees counterclockwise, but we're using it to accomplish our 90 degree clockwise rotation. Okay, so we're rotating about the origin, that's zero, zero. We'll put a figure uh, in one of our quadrants. I'm going to use quadrant two, the top left. And instead of another geometric shape, let's do something a little more interesting and pick a picture. So I'm gonna say insert, and instead of shape, I'm gonna to go to icon. And in my icon, I can search for things. So I'm gonna just say rocket. And I'm gonna choose the rocket they have and click insert. And instead of black, I'm going to choose a color. So once the rocket's in here, at the top is our graphics format tab, and then it says graphics fill. I'm going to choose that arrow, and we can choose a color for our rocket. I'll make it a blue rocket. And I'm going to put it over here in quadrant two. Now I want to get some points here that are going to line up nicely. So Let's see, this is five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna put the tip of the rocket at negative five, seven, and then I'm going to just make it a little bit bigger until I can get, I see the bottom of the rocket here is at negative seven, four. I've got some points that I can use uh, as reference points as I do my animation. Okay, so let's type that down here. Rocket tip is equal to negative five comma seven. And if I use this motion rule, I'm gonna take the X and the Y and switch them. It's gonna become Y and then we're gonna change the sign of X. So dash dash and the inequality symbol pointing to the right gives me an arrow. And then I will say this becomes seven comma five. And that's where I want my rocket tip to end up after we do the rotation. Um, I also said that the bottom of the wing here is at negative seven, four. Dash, dash, and the greater than symbol gives me an arrow. And that's going to become four, seven, when we use this uh, motion rule for animation. So to accomplish this, I'm going to make a copy of my image. So I click on it, I do con Command C, then Command V. I'm going to pull the image here for a moment so we can see it easily. And if we go up, I see that the graphics menu uh, was shaded. Once I clicked on it, it brought back my graphics menu, and all the way to the right here it says rotate. I'm going to say rotate it to the right, 90 degrees. So as this rotates around the origin, it, this should be the position of it after 90 degrees. And I want the tip of my rocket to be at 7.5. So we see 7.5, we're there. And then we want the tip of the wing to be at 4.7. 4.7, we're there. I can use my arrows on my keyboard to fine tune the location. And that's our starting point, that's our ending point. Now, rotations are a circle around a point, so let's draw a circle. We're gonna to go to Insert, Shape, we'll just pick the circle, and we'll draw a circle here. And notice that it can be an oval or a circle. We have to kind of just approximate it at first. And we'll put it into just a rough position here. Um, I need the inside of the circle to be clear. So I'm going to right click or two finger click on the circle and choose format shape. I'm gonna choose fill and say no fill. I'm gonna choose line 
I'm going to make my line red. I'm going to make the weight of the line four points and hit enter. And I'm going to choose the dash type to make it a dash line. So now I'm going to keep adjusting my circle. So I'm pulling it down to about eight. I'm pulling it up to about eight. And I have to pull it to the right about eight. And that's how I know I'm creating a circle because the coordinate plane is showing me that I'm moving equidistant from the center, eight to the left, eight to the right, eight up and eight down. It's equidistant, it gives me a circle. And eight looks like it lines up pretty good with my rocket. And that's what I'm going to use as my path for generating my new rockets. So come over to the left, choose the slide we're on and right click or two finger click, choose duplicate from the menu option. And now I'm going to make a copy of this rocket. So command C to copy, command V to paste. And I just want to paste it and tilt it a little bit. And then I'll make another um, duplicate of this. And now I'm going to move this rocket up a little more and tilt it. And I want to kind of stay right on the line because that's where my rockets are. And then I'll duplicate the slide again. And I'll move this rocket a little further, tilt it a little more. And we'll keep repeating this process, duplicate and adjust and shift over. So it looks like my rocket is moving on a smooth path. We can go back to slide one and click the down arrow just to see how my animation's coming along. So click the down arrow and we see how it's moving along. I can click the up arrow to go backwards, and I say this is going pretty good so far. And we'll go back and we'll continue. So I'm gonna duplicate the slides, move the rocket and adjust it, and then um, we'll talk about the next stages. So now that I have all of my slides in place, I'm gonna go back to the beginning slide and I'm going to say, I don't need this end rocket anymore. I'm gonna click on it and delete it. Um, I'm gonna close my windows all the way to the right here. I don't need them. I don't need my circle. I'll click on that and delete it. And now I'm gonna to go to the rest of my shapes. Now here, I don't want the first rocket anymore. I want the second rocket that's moving. I don't want the last rocket and I don't want the circle. Go to the next slide, delete the first rocket, the last rocket, and the circle. Go to the next slide. I'm gonna click on the first rocket. I'm gonna hold down my shift key and click on the second rocket and the circle. So I only have to hit delete once instead of three times. Next slide, click on the first rocket, hold down the shift key. And while I'm holding the shift key, I click on everything I wanna delete. Then I let go of the shift key and hit delete. So we'll do this again, first rocket, hold down the shift key. I'm still holding the shift key until I select everything. Then I let go and delete. So after we delete all of this out, we will have our animation without all of these extra uh, things in the scenery. So I go to the first slide, it's highlighted in orange, and I use my down key on my keyboard just to transition through the flipbook animation. And I see my, and now I'm using the up arrow to go backwards. I see my animation looks good. Now I'm ready to put my settings in for automatically transitioning. So we don't click the first slide, the title slide, we click, click the first animation slide, 
and then we go all the way down to the bottom, and not the last slide, but the second to last, and I hold down my shift key, and notice that every slide in between is orange, it's got that border on it, everything but the first and last slide. And then on my menu, I go to transitions, all the way on the right side, where it says on mouse click, we're gonna remove that checkbox, and there's a checkbox next to the word after, and we want this to be, this is one one hundredth of a second, so that it'll be a nice, fast and smooth animation. And we hit enter, and all those slides that were highlighted will have that apply to it. And now, if I click on my first slide, I can go to my menu where it says slideshow, and I'm gonna say play from start. Now this one doesn't have an automatic transition. We have to hit our arrow key to start it. Once I hit the arrow key, we see the animation goes through. If I want, I can hit my backwards arrow just to move it back again. And then once I hit my arrow key, it goes through. So we're going to export this now as a movie. So hit the escape key to get out of the PowerPoint. And we're gonna hit file, export. We're going to choose file format and say MP4. We're going to leave these settings, timing. We're going to leave the checkbox. We're going to use the recording timings and narr narrations that we set. And then seconds spent on each slide without a set time, reduce that to two. That'll be our title screen. And we hit export. And down at the bottom of the PowerPoint, see this little uh, bar? This is showing me the progress of exporting my movie. Once that bar is gone, the movie will be on my desktop. And I will go to my finder and my desktop and rotation video, I'll play it. And now when we hit play, we have our rotation video. And we can play it again. So notice that the title screen is two seconds, then the rotation is that one one hundredth of a second, then the last uh, slide was two seconds and we're going to end up putting this animation of rotations together with the other ones that we've done translations and reflections our goal is to make a better movie so we're learning these in stages but our end goal is to put it all together for one good movie